Hello Classic Rock fans, I am reporting the day after seeing Roger Waters perform his This Is Not A Drill tour at the Fiserv Forum in Milwaukee. Almost five years to the day since the last time Roger was in Milwaukee, also at the Fiserv Forum. I saw that show back in 2017 as well. This show had been rescheduled twice. It was originally booked for August of 2020. Much like everything that year, the pandemic you know, pushed it out uh, a couple of times. So, you know, for fans who have been waiting to see Roger, you know, for two years, um, it's, it was great to finally see him come through. So for this show, I went with my dad, uh, who was a huge Pink Floyd fan back in the day. He saw Pink Floyd at uh, Milwaukee County Stadium in 1975, 1977, and actually during the show, while speaking to the crowd, Roger mentioned uh, playing Brewers Stadium back in 77. So uh, my dad was very happy to hear that mention during the show. This show had a huge production, and there is a lot to talk about. Unfortunately, I probably can't get to everything because the scope of this show is just so huge. But the long and short of it was, it was great. It was immersive. This was beyond a rock concert. This was... Uh, it was multimedia. For one, the stage setup was in the round, so uh, the band is in a stage in the center of the arena, and over the stage was this gigantic cross-shaped video board, which is unlike anything I've ever seen. The only thing comparable to that was when I saw Roger Waters in 2017 at the forum. And he didn't do that. He in 2017 he played on the normal stage, but they had dropped down screens uh, from the ceiling over the crowd and projected video and images onto that. And at the time, I remember thinking, this is the biggest production I've ever seen at a concert. So here we are five years later, and he's one upped himself. You know, and when I was talking to my dad about seeing Pink Floyd back in the day, this is par for the course. Because back in the 70s, Pink Floyd, for my dad, was the first band to make use of video boards and have video playing behind them as they were, you know, playing their songs. And he said uh, this experience today sort of mirrored what he felt back in the 70s, uh, seeing them uh, during their heyday. And that's Probably one of Roger's greatest strengths is that each time he goes out on the road, he wants to push the limits of what can be done in a stadium show. I had seen Roger once before, back in Chicago in 2010, when he was on his The Wall live tour, which basically the show was him doing the entirety of The Wall. And again, in 2010, that was sort of the most <laughs> expansive, immersive show I had ever seen with all of the, you know, special effects and videos and uh, puppets, you know, th that went along with um, The Wall. It's really a credit uh, to Roger's drive to put on just the biggest scale show imaginable. As far as the production goes, I can't think of a single act that would rival what Roger does in any meaningful way. Nobody gets to the same scope as Roger Waters. And for that alone, the price of admission is worth it. You get bang for your buck in front of you. Like, you know what your ticket is paying for when you're seeing Roger Waters in concert. And I think that is a great credit to him. And for that reason, I'm going to see him every chance I can. I don't think he's done touring after this, and if he comes back, I'll be sure to keep going. And that's not to say this is the best show I've ever seen. In fact, I can see a lot of people, uh, despite all this production, not really enjoying this show. Um, because this show uh, is about more than music. In fact, you might accuse the show of being more about politics than about music. So, how can we talk about this? Because I, I don't want to get into politics, but... 
I think the best way for us to talk about this is for me to just give away what uh, Roger played at the very start of the show. On the, and I just don't have a better word for it, so when talking about this cross-shaped video structure, I'm going to call it the video board. <laughs> I don't know what it's called because it's a one-of-a-kind thing. So on Roger's video board at the start of the show, he projected a message that said, ladies and gentlemen, the show's about to begin. We have two requests. One, please turn off your cell phones. You know, that got a round of applause. And uh, right before it started, the usher came down by our section and told us we're not supposed to take pictures or videos. Um, and that's fine. Normally I don't dig that. Uh, but uh, given the production, I see what's going on, so I unfortunately uh, did not shoot any video or take any pictures except for when I wanted to. So it's, you know, I was very respectful, you know, did what they asked, again, except for the times that I wanted to. <laughs> okay, I'm being a bit of a smartass. And, and I will say, uh, that same usher during the first song was walking up and down the steps, like hollering across at people who were immediately ignoring him, which I wasn't. I didn't take a single picture until like the later half of the show. But during the first song, he was going up and down the stairs and anybody with their phone out, he was shouting, you have to keep your phone off, which was interrupting and annoying the people like me who were just watching the show. And I was really worried he was going to be doing this the whole show, not because I didn't want to get yelled at, but I didn't want some guy going up and down the stairs hollering at people to turn off their phones. I mean, like, at some point you just gotta deal with it. You can ask people not to take pictures with their phones, but I don't think in this day and age, for a stadium show, theater show is different. For a stadium show, I don't think you get to have total control over what people are doing with their phones. But anyway, and you, cer you certainly shouldn't have your ushers annoying the people who are doing nothing wrong, who are doing what you ask, by having him shout over them at someone who might be taking a picture with their phone. That was really fucking irritating. And it sort of ruined the first song of the set. Thankfully, that was the end of it. After that first song, he went back up to his perch and he didn't come back down and people started taking pictures. Uh, guilty. <laughs> but. No, no one went overboard. I didn't see anyone bootlegging the show or anything. Just normal shit. People are just taking a picture. Anyway, I'm talking way too much about pictures. So that was the first request. And then the second request, and this was very funny, but it speaks to the show. And it said, and it said If you're one of those I love Pink Floyd, but I can't stand Roger's politics types then you might as well fuck off to the bar. <laughs> and it was funny, but he meant it, because this show was insanely political. Every song had videos on the board with political messages, provocative imagery, pictures of presidents with the word war criminal over them, actual war footage, actual footage of police, you know, shooting unarmed people that uh, sparked the, the 2020 uh, protests, you know, really provocative, sort of visceral reaction type of stuff. This was an incredibly confrontational show. And here's the thing, I mean, Roger has always been open about his politics. Not just open, in your face about his politics. And it goes back to these days, by the way. So I've never had a problem with it. You know, Animals and The Wall are two of the most political albums I can think of, okay? And those are also beloved Pink Floyd classics. He never stopped being that guy. His solo work is all super political. You know, I was talking to my dad about it, and he said, you know, that's the thing with Pink Floyd is they don't have love songs. They don't write the silly love songs, you know? And the artistry of writing songs that are political in nature is that you have to find melodic, artistic, enjoyable presentations of these words, of these lyrics, you know, of your messages. That's the art. And it's tough to thread that needle because 
it's very easy for people to misinterpret things. You know, people still today think Born in the USA is like a 4th of July anthem, you know? <laughs> so you have to deal with the fact that Roger is an insanely political artist. And he's not shy about what he thinks, he's going to tell you what he thinks, and he is going to tell you in the most confrontational, in-your-face manner that he can come up with. There's a point in one of the songs where the video board flashed up, Orwell was right to warn us, so was Huxley, so was Eisenhower, and so am I. <laughs> My God! And I cracked up. I absolutely cracked up because it is very funny. Like, I have to think he's being tongue-in-cheek. But at the same th time, I think he's being totally genuine. And he is has that sort of opinion of himself. You know, this is how he sees himself. Someone who is, um, you know, telling you how bad it is out there. There was a lot of comedy in this show. Some of it intentional, some of it not intentional. I found comedy, at least. Because... I, I found comedy in how not subtle he was being, how confrontational he was with his messages in these songs. That was funny to me because the balls on this guy to just say this stuff is pretty crazy. But it did bother some people in the audience. You know, there, the, there was an old couple in front of me at the intermission. The old guy I had been talking to before the show turned around and, you know, we were kind of talking to him for a little bit and he said something about well I mean it's, it's good music but I don't have to agree with his politics you know he kind of grumbled about that I guess if you're not prepared for how political a show is going to be you could come in to a concert like this and be really unhappy if you're someone who doesn't agree with Roger's politics I at this point I would have to say if you're that person that's on you because Roger has always been this guy you should know this by now Anyone going into a Roger Waters concert should know what they're in for at this point. He's never been anything else but this. Not unlike if you went to go see Ted Nugent. You know Ted's going to be up on stage saying some crazy political shit of his own. You know, I don't agree with Ted's politics. But if I went to go see him, I wouldn't bitch about it. Because that's on me. I know who he is. I know what he's about. And I know what he's going to want to talk about or joke about or whatever. Because he's never been anybody else. He's never presented himself as anything else. Roger's the same way. The only difference between those two guys, besides their obvious political differences, <laughs> is Roger is at a much, much bigger scale and has a much, much larger fan base. So there's just a greater net, I guess, of people who might get caught off guard, you know, by what sort of show this is going to be. It makes me think of a story from when I saw him in 2017. It's kind of a funny story. I went with my buddy, and before the show, you know, we got to our seats and we sat next to an older couple. And the old guy was started talking to me, and he said he hadn't seen any concerts in like 20 years. And I think he made a joke about smoking a joint or something, you know. He seemed like a real nice dude. So, show starts, and halfway through, Roger starts playing Pigs on the Wing. And when he starts playing Pigs on the Wing, on these big video boards he has, he starts putting up Trump quotes. And when I say Trump quotes, I mean, you know, the greatest hits. I have a great relationship with the blacks. If Ivanka wasn't my daughter, I'd be dating her. You know, you know what I mean when I say Trump quotes. Like, the, the cringe <laughs> quotes. Um, the ones that make him look like not that great of a guy. You know? <laughs> because it was a, again, very political show, and it was a very anti-Trump show. Well, I guess the fella next to me voted for Trump, and was not expecting this, and did not understand it. So, as this show's going, he nudges me, and he's just like, I didn't think we were going to a political rally. And I kind of chuckled, and the quickest thing I could come up with to kind of wave away this conversation was, well, Roger, he's Hollywood, right? Hollywood. 
And I just kind of shrugged. And I hoped I wanted that to be the end of it because I like talking to people before the show and maybe at intermission and after. I don't want to talk during the show. I want to watch the concert, enjoy the music, focus on the music. That's why I was so mad about that Usher. So having this guy next to me grumbling about, you know, the politics, it's just like, well, hey man, you, you should have known, you know, <laughs> at this point. Again, Roger's always been this guy. The records you like are political. You just didn't think about it that much. But anyway, so he's quiet for another minute. And then again, these quotes keep coming up on the video board. And he nudges me again. And I, in my head, I'm trying not to get upset. So I lean over and he says, we're just trying to bring back jobs. <laughs> now my buddy on my other side, hears the old guy say, say this and he cracks up. So now I hear him laughing. <laughs> Because it's just like, what am I supposed to say that? We're just trying to bring back jobs? Uh, <laughs> what, 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 am I supposed to answer for Roger? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what do you want? I mean, th and that's the sort of thing where, you know, I, I don't know what I said. But it was, it was curt and dismissive. Because, again, I want to watch the show. If you're distracting me from the music, you're literally costing me money. And that's annoying. So... That sort of is where the rubber meets the road when it comes to casual music fans who don't pay attention to things like lyrics or what the artist does outside of the, you know, handful of songs that they like. And going to a show and seeing the artists show you who they are and what they're all about. So, yes, it's a, a funny memory, but I, I think of that guy sometimes because it's just like, well, he probably didn't have any fun that night, and he, he was like, this is my first concert in 20 years, and that uh, Roger's politics probably didn't change his mind. I'm guessing he did not vote for someone else in 2020, you know, because, again, it is so confrontational and so in your face, but I also don't care. You know, I don't care if that guy didn't have a good time, because, again, if you're going to go see a show, if you're going to spend the money to see a show, you should have a cursory knowledge of the artist you're going to see. Why would you spend that money if you don't know anything about the artist? You know? I don't know. So, a couple other things. One, they sent out messages beforehand saying, doors open at 7 p.m. and the show starts promptly at 8 p.m. So be in your seat and get in early. So, my dad and I got in line to get in to the forum at 7, sharp. It took us a half hour to get through the metal detectors, and we were among the first people in line. So we get in there, and we're on the escalator, and from the escalator you can see the crowd through the big glass windows out, and the lines were insane, you know? Everybody was in line to go, but security took so fucking long that most people were not even in the building um, in time to get to their seats. And you know how people are when they go to a concert. When you go in the building, you don't make a beeline for your seat. Maybe you want to get a beer. Maybe you need to run to the bathroom. Maybe you want to see the merch. So this one hour window was really obnoxious. But because my dad and I were among the first people to get in, we did have time to, to grab a beer, run to the bathroom, and get to our seat by eight. So we're sitting there again, actually with the same old guy I was talking about who kind of grumbled about the politics halfway through. We were laughing about how we have to be prompt. 8 p.m., 8 p.m. So 8.15 comes around and they start doing these, you know, warnings. Ladies and gentlemen, the show will start in 15 minutes. And uh, here, uh, here I, I took a video of one because it was just so funny. Ladies and gentlemen, the show will start in five minutes. So the show started at 8.30. I don't know what was with this urgency about starting right at 8. I don't know if that's Roger's decision or if it's the forum, but in any of the case, it was obnoxious. And if you're going to put those parameters on fans, then you have to make it a little more accessible and have your security do a more efficient job of getting people through. I mean, I think the modern concert security experience is obnoxious at best to begin with. At least they waited for 8.30 when everybody had the ability to get to their seats, but I, I thought there was absolutely no reason to be weirdly 
uh, demanding about the start time. I haven't talked a whole lot about the, the song selection. Here's the thing, the set list is great. He plays plenty of Pink Floyd. There's, there's all kinds of stuff for old school fans. If you like Roger's new album, he does sort of the right amount of those songs. Uh, for me, the best parts was when he did songs from the wall and he opened both sets that he did. He did two sets and both sets opened with songs from the wall. So those were the strongest parts for me. He had a great presentation on the video board for Have a Cigar that showed some great old footage of the band back in their heyday. My dad loved that, super nostalgic. And in the second half of the show, you know, they did songs like Money and Us and Them, and it's humming along, and it felt like, hey, we're going to end maybe on time or something. We're going to end on a strong note. Like, you know, he's doing a couple of Pink Floyd songs here in a row, and we're getting pretty late into the night, so we're, we're going to end on a good note. And it's important for big scale shows to stick the landing. And if I had one real criticism for this tour, this is it. The ending for the show, the finale, is god awful. Really bad on a couple of different levels. The last couple songs are. The last song of the night is Outside of the Wall, which the band plays as they're walking off stage. And then a reprise of a song from the new album called The Bar that he's doing. So it's a continuation of a song he started doing like much earlier in the night, which was, I guess he thought it was pertinent, but you know, it was kind of a miss for everybody in the crowd. There's a lot of people walking out during that part. And then the song before that, so the third last song, the last Pink Floyd song of the night was not from The Wall, it wasn't from Dark Side, it wasn't even from Animals. You know what it was from? The Final Cut. He did a song called Two Sons in the Sunset, which is off this album. An album nobody cares about. Not saying it's a bad album, but it's an album I, nobody talks about, nobody's interested in, nobody wants to hear anything from. There's no hits here, there's nothing. This is, this is what, it, like, I have this album because I found it cheap somewhere. <laughs> and he had the audacity to pretty much, the, the final big set piece was a song from this record. And it's a song, as you can see by this inner artwork, they did a lot of this kind of visual on the video board. It's a song about nuclear holocaust. It's a song about the end of the fucking world, played totally straight with no no irony it is the most dour down song i ever heard the visuals on the video board of people animated people being you know uh, obliterated by nuclear war is disturbing and unpleasant and depressing and just makes you feel bad so he plays that and then he plays again the reprise of this song called The Bar, and then outside the walls the people walk off stage. You leave that show feeling, like, lousy. And my dad, who had absolutely been enjoying the show up until this point, as we were walking out, said, what a horrible ending. And he's right. It was, it was a really lousy, depressing, down note to walk out on. And I'm sure there's a lot, a lot of you know, Roger fans, diehards, that would tell me I don't get it, and, you know, I'm not thinking hard enough about it, and fine, I don't care. Yeah, I think part of the art of a big stadium show experience is that you want your audience to go out on a good note, or maybe on a thoughtful note. This wasn't particularly thought-provoking. It was depressing. The, the threat of nuclear holocaust is not new, it's not thought-provoking, it's sad, and it makes you feel powerless, and it's a little scary, and yeah, man, I don't know, I don't know what else to say, like, I thought it sucked, and the song was secondary to the video he put on the board, and the other music that kind of trailed off behind it felt like an afterthought, so it really wasn't even a big, boisterous ending either, it was a very 
you know, slow, quiet, fading out kind of thing. So, I don't know. I guess it's just me, but I, I absolutely hated the ending. Loved the show as a whole. I have... I don't care about the political stuff. I'm fine with it. I agree with some of it. I found the music to be expertly performed. I found the production to be over the top and well worth every dollar I paid for the ticket. I felt that Roger's comments in between the songs, despite his reputation, were friendly, appreciative, funny, engaging, very positive. I felt the things he was saying to the crowd was great. Everything about this show, I would rate an A, except for the finale, which I would rate like an F. <laughs> because it, I don't know what he was trying to do. Well, I, I have an idea what he was trying to do with it, but I think it totally failed, and I think it was a really lousy way to send everybody home. So, that's all I got to say about that. If Roger comes to your town, I would definitely recommend going, if nothing else, but for the spectacle, maybe I would advise heading out to your car when he announces that he's about to do a song about nuclear war, because all the good parts of the show is over. And if you're going to be bringing uh, your boomer relatives with you, make sure they're okay with the politics. <laughs> you know, make sure they're aware of what they're in for. If you don't want to hear the politics, don't go. It's just that simple. Roger cares more about the politics than the music. He cares about the music a lot, but the politics even more. So you're not getting one without the other. Okay, with that, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this concert review, I have more like it on this channel, so please subscribe to this channel. I have more coming yet this summer. And if you're a fan of classic rock, please check out the podcast I do about classic rock. Link is in the description below. Also, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter. So, thanks for tuning in. Keep rocking.